we can further explore hierarchies in systems. And so when we talk about um, this system, we can talk about the individual components and um, we can talk about it in terms of ecology. So individuals, and then we could talk about populations. So we could talk about individual plants in a desert or individual trees in a forest. And then we can talk about populations and populations are defined as all the individuals in a particular area. So then the next level would be a community and a community is composed of all of the different species of all of the different populations of all of the different individuals in that given area. So you can see how we're putting things together and making this bigger. Then when we talk about an ecosystem, an ecosystem doesn't just take into consideration um, the uh, living things, but also takes into consideration the non-living factors. So it would be like altitude, like how far are you above sea level? It would include rainfall. It would include temperatures, right? So it would include all of these other things, maybe even the rocks that um, make up the soil that is in and underneath the living um, organisms. So from the ecosystem, we can then talk about biomes. So we kind of put it, the ecosystems into groups. So we can talk about um, temperate rainfall biomes, or rain, excuse me, rainforest biomes. We could talk about um, desert biomes. We could talk about boreal forest biomes, right? So we can talk about coral reef biomes. So we put those together. So like all of the coral reefs on the planet make up the coral reef biome. So from this biome, then we get to the planet. And so when remember that as we move up, it becomes more complex. So we're increasing the complexity. We're also um, seeing that there are kind of unknown stochastic variables that could influence each of these individual components. And when we go into this systems approach, one of the things that we discover is, is that there's variables that arise that are new, that cannot be explained by the, un, um, the individual components. And so if we're looking at ecosystems and we wanna see how the planet is responding to elevated CO2 levels, and you're like, well, why is there so much, uh, uh, discussion about this between scientists. They don't know anything, so we don't need to do anything. Um, and I'm just not going to uh, worry about it until somebody comes out and says, we know for sure, right? And so that is the argument. And when I was in school, climate change 30 years ago was a pretty much known thing that was gonna happen. And um, since then, there's been a lot of like modeling of it and trying to figure out what, how, how it's gonna look. But we knew that um, anthropomorphic uh, climate change was inevitable. And so waiting until we are for sure know what's gonna happen is probably the not the best um, advice, um, the not the best, the best strategy because these systems are so complex, we don't, really know what's gonna happen, but we do know um, that um, there are certain variables that are influencing, like the release of CO2 into our atmosphere. So this is a natural system, complex system with hierarchies, but we can also look at a complex system like economics and sociology. So we can look at the supply chain for COVID vaccines, just as another example. So this doesn't even take into consideration all of the research. I mean, can you imagine those individual researchers in different universities or different companies having all of the pieces that needed to go together 
to put together a vaccine, but this is just the distribution of it. So um, for example, we needed to, to develop factories. So we have this factory. We need to figure out the way to store it. So we need special boxes. So we need other factories to build these special boxes. We need dry ice. So we needed to produce dry ice in abundance and develop a way to distribute it. So the distribution network, we have both uh, airplanes and trains, right? And they're going to the vaccination center. And then that then has to distribute out again to the individual uh, people that are providing the vaccinations. So this is like a huge system. The, the difference between one vaccine and the other, right? This one doesn't have to be uh, stored at such a cold temperature. And so we can, um, distribute them to distribution centers and then out to the vaccination center without having to skip that because of the way that it has to be cold or cooled. So just be amazed at when things work okay because of all of these factors that go into um, building a complex system like this one.